Let's spend a few minutes talking about improving the performance of your applications. And we are going to do that by asynchronous component loading. Knowing this concept is going to greatly, well, it's going to benefit your chances of landing that new view job. It's going to make your chances better when we talk about faster and more performant web applications. Also, your chances are better for getting a better conversion rate because your applications are faster and users love that. Okay, let's dive right in. So uh, learning from the last example where I talked about asynchronous data fetching, right? Uh, we're going to be building on top of that to create an asynchronous component. All we have today is a list of users and I'm going to do something very, very simple. I'm going to move that user component into a component on its own. So we have this div v else v for user and user data. And this component is very simple. It just shows username and first name and last name. So this is a component that I want to lazy load. Okay, to do that, let's create it first. New file, I'm gonna call it user. And I notice it's singular. Users I view. Okay, and I need something very simple, you know, div. There we go. This is just a simple user. And then I'm gonna give it a name. Name is going to be user. And I need some props, because I'm gonna be getting some data from outside this component. So I'm gonna be using user, and that's gonna be an object. Okay, inside users, I need to import that component. And I'm gonna use that user right here instead of div. Remove that. And v4 user in users.data. That's, I think, everything. Let's double check my user. Everything is good. Good here. And the application is reloaded. User is defined but never used, obviously, because I have user. But I don't have my components. User. And there we go. And that doesn't work because every time we do live coding, to me, it's like watching Titanic. I hope it's not going to hit that iceberg. I hope they're going to see it and it never happens. Similar with live coding, even on camera, I always forget something. So I forgot the user object is going to be user right here. Let's reload. So we have a clean state. And George, Charles, Tracy, they are all here. Good, good. So what we created is a synchronous components, so to speak, because we use a static import, the user's component or the user component is going to be bundled with the rest of the application. Now, I don't want that anymore. I want the user component to be dynamically loaded, loaded on demand. Okay, from view, I'm going to import a new API called define async component. Hopefully it's async and it oh, sunk. And now I'm going to define it. You know, I'm going to change it change the name, I'm going to call it async user, just so we know, just so we are sure what's going on, is define async component. And inside of this, I only need to provide an error function because this is going to be a callback. And I'm going to import user.view. Let's delete this guy. We also need to rename user and components user right here. Saving. Let's see if this works. It well, it doesn't uh, on the first try because I need to reload. I'm reloading. It's good. It works. How do I know it works exactly? I'm going to open the network panel. The network panel. I'm going to make sure that I reload. And now I see this 0.js. Okay. You know what 0.js is? This is our new chunk. How do I know that? Because if I expand this a little bit, and I go down, I see user.view right here. So kind of a poor way to know about my chunks. Let me close this thing and let's try to help ourselves right here in the code. How do we know that this is the user chunk? I'm sure you already know that view is built on the foundation of Webpack. If you want to be great at view, I think it's important that you also understand what's happening inside Webpack. And Webpack is amazing, an amazing bundler for JavaScript, 
but it also has a really cool feature. This is called Webpack Magic Comments. So I'm gonna use a magic comment from Webpack to give this chunk a name. Let's do it. So I'm gonna create a comment. This is a JavaScript comment, but Webpack is going to understand it. This is me whispering to Webpack. Webpack chunk name user okay i'm gonna save this and let's open the network again oh look at this user.js i know what the name of it is now because i used the magic comment i whispered the magic comment over to webpack it's called user great okay now ladies and gentlemen you were able to code split your application. How about that? It's not over yet because I wanna show you how this API works to a bit greater detail, right? So far, so good. And if there's one thing you should learn out of it is use the find async component to create, um, to code split your application. But now we're gonna show how you can use suspense with this because, well, we are already using suspense, but suspense is, is kind of eating into that loading message, which may be good. You know, this may be exactly what you want, but sometimes you may want to create a custom loading message for a component that may take time to load. For example, a component that consumes moment.js with all the locales loaded, right? A component that may be showing this um, big date and time formatting calendar application for something, right? So in some cases, you may need to create a custom loading message for this. And I wanna show you how to do that exactly. But to do that, we are going to need to tell the uh, astronauts component to display its own loading message and not to bubble up to the suspense boundary. Let's see, let's do it. So define asking component accepts this callback, right? But, you know, it can do more than that. It can accept a uh, config. So loader property is that callback, okay? And before I do anything, I'm gonna close this and save just to make sure I didn't mess something up or it's well. Okay, now I'm gonna say the loading component is going to be loading. I don't have that component yet, so I'm gonna have to create it. But before I do that, I, I wanna use something else. I wanna use more properties. I'm gonna say delay is going to be 200. So that's a delay um, that needs to be exhausted before the loading component shows. There's other stuff you can do. You can use your error component. Okay, that can be a custom thing. If you do that, you know, if you do that, you can also use timeout. And this is the default timeout that you use before showing the error component. Meaning if this asynchronous action has not completed within the timeout, show the error component. Okay, I'm not gonna use that really. I only wanna show loading. But I also said we need to kick this out of this suspense boundary. Because if we leave it as is, suspense boundary wins, and we show the template fallback, we see this message instead of our loading component message. Okay, let's go back. So I wanna say suspensible is false. All right, this means, hey, you know, do not oblige a parent suspense boundary. Okay, it's just so loading component does not exist. Uh, I need to create it. And I'm going to paste some content. That's all I needed. Going back to users, I wanna save this. And obviously loading is not defined because, hey, Import loading from loading. Okay, this is better. So to properly see this, I need to slow the time. Well, first thing I need to expand this a little bit. So I have a wider console view. Go to network and I'm gonna change online. I'm gonna throttle the speed of my connection to fast 3G. Okay, I need to keep the uh, console running and I'm gonna reload. 
So the console needs to be running so that the throttling can take effect. Okay, now we were able to see this for a second. So you saw importing viewsers and then a loading component several times because we are loading the component several times as well. This is all you need to know if you want to code split your application properly. I hope you like this content. I hope you like Vue as well. If you do, I suggest you talk to your bosses, you talk to your company. If you like Vue, if Vue is helping you make more revenue, why not help maintain Vue? Stay tuned for the next video. I'm gonna be talking about creating modules with component API. And when you see it, you're gonna be thinking, hey, do I need Vuex anymore? Hmm? Well, stick around for that. This is coming soon. Thank you for watching. Stay awesome, stay beautiful.